Okay, so look what's back. Lasted a day and a half, about 50 to 60 kilometers. Fuse didn't blow, then it blew one time. Blew a second time, and I think they put three fuses in it and came in with a blown fuse. So I've wired in a headlight in place of the fuse. And at first when I turned the key on, uh, the headlight did nothing, absolutely nothing. And then when I started it, the headlight came on bright, like there's a short. And I can hear a buzzing noise. I don't know if that's a transmission pressure regulator buzzing now because it's got low voltage, because of the voltage drop across the headlight. But and you'll see as soon as it stops buzzing, it's, the problem goes away. Whatever it is only occurs on key on. That time it didn't do it. Hmm. I'm going to have to have a look at this circuit and see what else is on that circuit. As far as I know, it's just the transmission and the feedback to the ECM or PCM. So I've installed a relay switch and simply turned it on. And as you can see, the headlights on bright indicating that there's a short. Now there's no buzzing noise coming out of the, out of the transmission, it sounded like. But I'm going to try moving some wires around here to see if I can get that the headlight to go off. Hmm. Now I know that this engine was out a couple of years ago. Hmm. I wonder where the wiring harness runs. I know it runs out of this tip for sure. Maybe we'll have a look underneath this thing. So I had a look underneath the tip and I don't see anything all the time with the relay switch on. I got the key off. And I've got a significant short because there should be no current flow in this circuit right now. But the headlight is on indicating that it's current flow. So I came over here to this side and I grabbed the harness going down about below the transmission. Watch the headlight. Look at that. So somewhere back there on the bell housing... That harness is chafed. So let's take the engine cover off and see if we can see it. I looked from below and I didn't see anything, but oftentimes it has something to do with somebody being there and doing something and probably not securing that harness properly, but we'll see if we can find out where it is. Short's gone now. Manipulate this harness. If I pull up on the harness slightly, I can get the short to show up. If I push down on it, it goes away. So somewhere on top of the transmission, the harness is chafed because it's not secure in its bracket up here. It was tied originally to there. It was clipped into the valve cover. But while I was here, I got the air cleaner off and I thought, well, let's have a look at the air filter. I wonder if it needs to be serviced. Whoa! Little rodent activity in here. I wonder where they... I, better, I think we better service this re-washable air filter. I wonder if there's any critters in here. Look, they got a sock in here for crying out loud. Look at that. Oh, and jewelry. <laughs> Isn't that pleasant? I got the headlight sitting on top of the tire and I'm underneath the vehicle now playing with this harness from below. And I'll point the camera at the headlight and if I move the harness down here pull it down slightly the headlight goes out push it up slightly the headlight goes on but I can't see where it's compromised because it's behind the intake manifold so I'm gonna have to disconnect the harness from everything on the transmission down here so this plug on the transmission here and the speed sensors and the transfer case connector probably a pressure sensor on the other side Looks like O2 sensor wires too, and pull the harness up from the back because it's not secure on the back of the engine and it's been rubbing on something up there. And I could probably tie it out of the way for now and that'll fix the problem, but the wire will likely corrode then and fail open. So make sure you use some compressed air to blow around that connector on the transmission, which faces up and 
clean it off as best as possible and clean off any loose debris around the top of the transmission. Otherwise, that kind of stuff will fall into the connector. Now what I've done is I've temporarily plugged in a test connector that I have for diagnostic purposes. Just, just set it in there just so that nothing can fall in there when I'm pulling this harness up. I got all the connectors undone and I'm going to go up on top and hopefully you can still, you can still see that light coming on and off as I move the harness. I got to unplug that oxygen sensor up there, damn it. And I'll leave the one on the right side because it's attached to the right. Well, I got to see if I can unplug that upper oxygen sensor. Well, this is not working the way I thought it was going to. That harness actually wraps right around the back of the engine, comes up on this side, goes across to this harness here, down around the front of the engine. I think the best thing to do here is to pull the intake manifold off so I can get back there. As I said, I can tie it where it's not shorting, but that's like putting Jiffy on a toothache. So I'm going to give the customer a call and talk to them about what's involved here. I can't get the harness up enough. There's an intake manifold runner control connector at the back, which you can barely put your fingers on, let alone disconnect. And then the harness still wraps around this side. So you'd have to unplug everything on this side of the engine to pull it over. It's not just a matter of pulling it up. I thought it was just going down to the transmission, but it's actually the right or left fuel injectors, left ignition coils and intake manifold controls and so on. So I decided to remove the intake manifold assembly and you can see the harness, how it routes around the back of the engine around this side here over here. So uh, I can still turn that switch on and power up that circuit, although the short is gone now. Uh, hopefully we can find a, a spot on that wire harness. I think it's right by the back of the right cylinder head. I think that's where the wires were rubbing on the cylinder head or that shield above the transmission there. Actually, there's a ground strap going across the back of the engine too. Maybe they're compromised on that. We're going to stuff some paper towel in these intake ports so I don't drop anything in there. And climb in there and see if we can see anything. So I think, think the short was occurring. Back here on this ground strap right there. And I think it's right in this area here where the wire is all chewed. But I can't see any insulation through the wire. So I'm going to untape this. And we're looking for a yellow-orange wire. And I think it's going to be compromised in this area here. But it was definitely shorted in that area. And I think it was shorted right on that wire there. Anyways, I'll tape this anyway I can find. So I believe it's this yellow orange wire right here. There's a little tiny nick in the insulation. You can hardly see it. But I did find another wire in here that's definitely compromised. It wasn't broken but when I pulled on it, it, it broke. And that's not the wire. It's a yellow orange wire. So it's either this one or this one or one of these small wires here, and that's yellow pink. No, that's yellow orange. But there is a, a nick in the insulation right here in this wire. So I'm gonna repair this one, put some liquid electrical tape over top of this nick, and tape this harness back up and secure it in the proper place, or at least, and it was rubbing right on this bolt. There's a sharp edge on the bolt right there. Or, or down here on this part of this ground strap because the wire wasn't secure where it was supposed to be. So I got the wiring harness repaired and taped up. I'm going to secure it to the uh, transmission dipstick tube so that it doesn't fall down and secure it over by the uh, AC pipe there as well. But I see a problem here. I was wiping off the gasket surfaces here and I was intending to reuse the intake gasket. I'll show you what I, I mean. So here's the underside of the intake manifold. These gaskets were replaced when the engine was done a couple of years ago. I think there's supposed to be a ribbed gasket in here. 
because that's a, a PCV circuit or an oil passage, as is this one right here. And there's no gasket in here. It didn't fall off. It was never installed as far as I could tell. It should be a gasket like this one. And this thing has an oil leak in the back corner. And I was looking at it thinking it could be the valve cover. But now, if you look at that spot where the oil was accumulating. There was oil down here. So that gasket goes around these ports. Hmm. I was thinking it might have been leaking from the O-rings on this solenoid, but it's dry in here and it's wet back there. So the oil's running down the back of the engine. And I think it's coming out of those parts. I think we're missing a couple of gaskets. Damn, I wanted to put this back together tonight. So there's the intake gasket set. Shows eight square port gaskets, two of these and a round circle. And I'm not sure where the round circle goes, but definitely we're missing those two gaskets. So there's the gasket set, and there's the two missing gaskets. I believe this O-ring is for the PCV. Uh, it's definitely not on the bottom, so I think it's for the PCV. This passage here goes up to the PCV valve, and this is the oil fill passage when you're putting oil into it. So we're going to change out all these gaskets, put some dielectric grease on them, and reassemble this intake. So there's all the gaskets installed. I'm hoping that's going to fix the oil leak this customer's had for a while. We assumed it was from the right valve cover. Okay, let's put it back together. So there's the engine back together. I put a piece of wire screen over the air induction to keep the critters out of the in, uh, air cleaner housing. Uh, I've got to clear the codes, start it up, and see how it runs. I did put a new fuse in here, new 20 amp fuse, spare one right here in case the customer wants it. And uh, we'll clear the codes now. So we're going to go in and clear the codes out of this. I'll do one more code scan and see what codes were there. Expect the same ones we had before when the fuse blew. Key is on. Map sensor code, I had it unplugged. Intake air temp sensor code, I had it unplugged. TCM power input low, yeah, 882, 876, 988, 871 and 846, and 883. I think this thing is done. Uh, not quite, 12 controllers. And all those are in the same computer called the transmission computer. No other codes. So on Chrysler products, you have to clear the codes with off, key on engine off. Especially the engine control module. They won't let you clear the codes with it running. This does have the integrated trailer brake control. Come on, you can do it. Okay, 15 controllers, codes cleared. Okay, let's go back into the transmission computer, read codes. We got a map sensor code. Hmm, better make sure I plugged it in. So the map sensor connector wasn't completely seated. I cycled the connector. Let's clear the codes now. Let's go back and read the codes. We should be good to go now. Take this for a road test. I'm 99% sure we've eliminated that short. Thanks for watching.